Hello and welcome back to another episode of Project Blunicorn, the Ultima Evolution build. Uh, my name is Humble and today uh, I'm going to go over uh, some of our progress and we're going to set up the car to do an alignment. So uh, when we last left off we were getting the luggage bins painted uh, with an undercoat, uh, some of the spectrum from uh, second skin. And here are the results. So you can kind of see this nice uh, texture left behind. And this is all cured now. And you can hear, uh, it doesn't quite ring as much as it used to. I could probably add uh, another two or three more coats and it would be truly dead, but I'm not too worried about it. Uh, I'm going to, uh, I'm gonna add some uh, luxury liner uh, to go underneath the carpet. So that should do a good job of uh, damping uh, the, the luggage bins so they don't ring. Uh, now as far as the suspension and alignment go, you'll see we have the shocks installed all the way around. And what we need to do is, this is uh, with the shock at full droop. It's kind of hard to tell, but the, uh, the arms are angled downward slightly. And when it's in the resting position with the weight on the wheels, the arms will be uh, flat or a little angled up. So uh, there are measurements that you can get for uh, these bars here. These are right height bars. So the smaller bars, these ones are for the front and the slightly longer ones are for the rear. Uh, the front, this, these are uh, 296 millimeter hole to hole and the rears are 314 millimeter hole to hole. Or sorry, I should say hole center to hole center for both of those. So that sets the car at ride height. So what we need to do is swap those shocks with these ride height bars. So that's what I'm gonna do next. And then from there, what we have to do is take these calipers off all the way around and then we're going to set up a string box. So uh, for each step, I'll kind of show you the way. So let's get started. ride height bars installed and now you can see sort of what I was talking about with the uh, kind of uh, upward uh, position of the upper and lower control arms up on the front here and you can see how uh, uh, well the brake disc already looks a little cambered and then uh, kind of same thing for the rear the upper control arm is a uh, kind of facing upward a little bit and the lower control arm looks fairly flat. But this is uh, kind of the position that the suspension will be in uh, once the you know frame is uh, loaded up. It's got the motor and trans and the body and everything on it. And this will be the 
resting position of the suspension. And uh, that's just much easier to set the initial alignment with these uh, right height bars in place than trying to do uh, the alignment with the body uh, on the car. So now what we need to do is uh, we're going to set up a stream box with uh, these levels here. I'm going to double check them for flatness, but we're going to attach one here at the front and one at the back of the chassis. And then we're going to run uh, strings front to back. Uh, and what that will allow us to do is we'll double check our, friend, our center uh, frame measurement here, ditto in the rear. We'll transfer those measurements onto our levels front and rear. Um, make sure that everything's flat and square. And then when we set up a perfectly square box and we'll check and double check and measure everything, uh, at that point then uh, we can measure uh, our camber and set our toe uh, using that uh, uh, kind of yarn line or a string line as a reference point. And uh, that'll make more sense once I get everything set up. So for now, I'll go ahead and get our chassis center measured and get our levels in place and we'll start assembling a string box. All right, and here we go. I've got the uh, string box uh, kind of in a preliminary setup. Um, I can show you here at the back. So this is set just at about the right height. I need to raise the string up a little bit. Uh, the string should be even in height with the center of the hub front and rear. And uh, the front's way off, but uh, it was just a pain in the ass enough to get it to this point. Um, I have these uh, levels. I marked out center on the level and then center on the chassis. And then I ran the string front to back with the two levels centered up in the chassis. Uh, the measurements came out right for my string box, so I know I can repeat that tomorrow. I just have to uh, raise these levels up by a few inches in the front and just a couple in the back. Um, I had to take the calipers off. You can see it just sitting there on the chassis. Um, and the reason is, is because, it's, well, if I can find my tape measure. There we go. So when you're setting the alignment, you want to be able to uh, put the tape measure against the front of the disc and then measure it on the line. And then likewise at the back of the disc, measure it on the line. Um, and as long as you have your steering centered up, um, that's how you'll dial in uh, your, your toe front and rear on the suspension. And I need to get a camber gauge and you would attach that to the hub here and that tells you how the the wheel is inclined this way uh, negative camber looks like this positive camber is like that which is bad and then finally uh, caster which tells you if it's leaned back like this or if it's leaning forward if it's leaning forward that's super bad uh, what we wanted to do is we want to have it sit uh, at an angle like this at about five degrees or so, uh, four to five degrees for the Ultima is about where you want the front caster to be. Um, for camber, which is uh, this way, uh, we wanna have, uh, uh, well, we'll probably start at uh, negative two degrees uh, camber for the front and then uh, for the rear, again, angled with the top into the car. Uh, we'll start at uh, one and a half degrees negative camber for the rear. And then uh, finally, if you look down on the wheel, our toe, which is like this, uh, we're going to do just a hair toe out on the front, like uh, uh, maybe half a millimeter or one millimeter toe out in the front. And in the rear, uh, oh, which actually we'll go back here. So, uh, toe in looks like this, where the wheels are pointing into each other, and toe out is like this. Uh, so we want just a, a little bit of toe out, um, 
just one millimeter or so, which helps with uh, turn in on the car. And then at the back of the car, we want turn in, which is like this, with this disc in by one millimeter on each side. And what that does is that helps with the stability of the car. Um, so setting up the suspension is gonna be, well, it's pretty much a pain. Uh, all we want to do though is uh, we're really worried about getting at least the uh, um, the toe in, which is this way, looking down on it. We want to make sure that's uh, more or less straight and true. And we want to make sure that the camber, again, looking at it this way with the top leaning in, is somewhat close. Uh, and we just want to get to a point where it's drivable. And uh, then we're going to take it to... Uh, real professionals who get paid to do this stuff and know what they're doing uh, to set everything up properly uh, and it's uh, you know much better that way rather than guy in garage so uh, even though this is this setup here with the strings is exactly what race teams use uh, in the pits or in uh, in the paddock to set up uh, most race cars even today um, so I mean it's a it's a tried and true method and uh, it can quickly get you close, but when you get into suspensions like this where you have uh, like these heim joints front and rear and uh, you know same for the bottom arm and then this adjustment on the the upper ball joint and you know ditto for the rear and then you have like also in the rear you have this you know toe link adjuster on top of you know these. Himes and these Himes and then this upper Heim and uh, you can quickly throw everything out of whack just trying to adjust one thing so so I find it's better just to set up uh, a preliminary alignment that's good enough to uh, kind of get by uh, until you can get to the car to a proper shop all right so it's the next morning uh, after setting up the string box and uh, we have our friend Jeff here say hello Jeff Hello, Jeff. And what he's doing is uh, he's getting the luxury liner cut so we can put that inside of our luggage pods. So it's going to fit right inside here. And that'll help uh, dampen any vibration and noise. And uh, we'll probably attach that uh, with some uh, spray adhesive so it doesn't move around. And then the carpet lays on top of that. Uh, for me, what I need to do is I need to take our string box and raise it up a little bit because it doesn't line up with the hubs in the front of the car. And once I get that done, then I can start on the pre-alignment proper. Uh, so let's get to it. All right, so here we have the rear toe link adjusters. Uh, Jeff was so kind to trim these up. So normally, uh, Let's see if we can get focus here. Uh, these heim joints are 10 millimeters longer and both heims bottom out inside of this turnbuckle uh, and you have to trim uh, one of the heims by 10 millimeters in order to get the adjustment length needed to set toe for the rear suspension. So Jeff was able to cut these down and he did a fantastic job and they wind right in. Uh, normally, if we can, can't really focus on it, but you can sort of see the, the threads at the end there. If you munge those up, you have to clean them up with a file, but if you're careful enough like he was and you get a nice clean cut, you can just wind it right in and you don't have to worry. So with that job down, uh, we can kind of go back here on the front suspension and see our progress so far. Well, you're actually not going to see anything, but uh, we have our upright uh, tightened and in. We set the length for our tie rods. So our front toe-in is set. And currently, uh, the front suspension is set to uh, negative two degrees camber at ride height. So now in the back, we can see that uh, this is where the rear toe link adjuster goes in and we'll get that popped in place and we'll set our toe in in the rear and then we'll measure our camber in the rear as well and uh, make sure that's good to go.